Hi there. Now for this question, we're asked to find the exact area of the trapezium ABCD, giving your answer as a simplified third. Now, this question echoes the fact that uh, a point that I've made many times over when dealing with vector questions, always draw a diagram, okay? Because I don't know how you could do this question really without a diagram. So your diagram might not look like the one that we've built up so far, but it should still fundamentally have the same methods in it. Now, I've also updated the diagram with the coordinates of A. The position vector of A was minus 2, 4, 7, but I've written the coordinates as minus 2, 4, 7 in like this. And similarly for B, it's minus 1, 3, 8. Remember, we've got the vector A to B, 1, minus 1, 1, which we worked out in the very first part of this question. And we've also got the position vector of P, the midpoint of DC. Its position vector was 0, 2, 3. So we've got to find then the area of this trapezium A, B, C, D. What I'll do is I'll just join up the missing sides, B to C and A to D. So just to give us an idea of that trapezium. Now your trapezium might not look exactly like the one I've got, but that doesn't matter, okay? How do we find the area of a trapezium? Well, first of all, let's just put down area of A, B, C, D. Well, the area of a trapezium is going to be half the sum of the parallel sides. So the parallel sides that we've got are going to be A, B and D, C. So we're going to need to add those two lengths together. So we just put those in and we multiply all of this by the distance between the two parallel sides. So I'll call that H and H will be then any perpendicular distance across here. Now, I know the length of AB. It's going to be the modulus of this vector, 1 minus 1, 1. It's going to be then the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. In other words, the root of 3. So if I've got that length of AB, let's just start to put that in. In fact, we can build this up. We've got half then the distance AB, which is root 3. And then for DC, because dp and pc were the same lengths as ab then this must be a total distance of twice ab two root three in other words so we've got that in there what we need though is h so how do we get h well the best thing we can do is to pick up on an earlier part of the question we found out the angle between P and, well, the angle PBA. Okay, so if I mark that in on the diagram here, right, it was this angle in here, which was theta. And we showed in, I think it was uh, part C, that the cosine of angle PBA was one third. Let's just mark that in over here, okay, that the cosine of theta equaled one third. Now, if I create a right angle triangle, okay, we'll go from here straight the way across to the line L1, okay, we're marking a right angle there, I hope you can see that, okay, then this is the perpendicular distance between the two lines, that's H. So, in order to get H, I just need to do a little bit of trigonometry on this triangle. I know that the sine of the angle theta, let's just put it here, sine of angle theta equals the opposite side, which is H, divided by the hypotenuse, which is PB. So I know sine theta, I can get sine theta quite easily knowing cos theta is a third. I'll show you. All we've got to think of is just a triangle. Okay, we're looking at the ratio of sides. This is not an accurate triangle, not drawn to scale. If this is theta, then the cosine of theta is a third, that's 
comparing the adjacent side, so if we have that as one unit, to the hypotenuse, three units. So that means that this side here, this shorter side by Pythagoras' theorem, is going to be the square root of 3 squared minus 1 squared, the square root of 9 minus 1, in other words, the square root of 8. An 8 can be broken down to 4 times 2. So you could do the square root of 4, which is 2, and just leave it as 2 root 2. Okay, so root 8 equals 2 root 2. So that's that side. So when it comes to the sine of theta, it's going to be 2 root 2 for the opposite side over the hypotenuse 3. So I can see that this we can work towards as being, I'll put therefore there, 2 root 2 over 3. And that's going to equal h divided by pb. But I haven't got the length pb. So how do I get the length pb? Well, if I get the vector p to b, or b to p, I just need to find its magnitude. So we'll just start off then by working out what the vector p to b would be. It's quite involved, as you can see, this question. I'm thinking four marks here, and I'm thinking, gosh, this is quite a lot of work for four marks. Anyway, p to b, o to b, minus o to p. And o to b, okay, was the vector minus 1, 3, 8. Okay, so we've got minus 1, 3, 8. And then we've got minus O to P, which is 0, 2, 3. 0, 2, 3. And then if we subtract that, what we get is minus 1, 1, 5. So when it comes to the magnitude of PB, it's just going to be the square root then of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 5 squared. Just put it in here. 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 5 squared. And that comes to root 27. So just need to rearrange this for H. So therefore H equals the 2 root 2 okay over 3 times the root of 27 well root 27 is 3 root 3 so I can see that this can simplify quite a lot then that's 2 root 2 over 3 times 3 root 3 and so those threes cancel and we're just left with 2 times root 6 2 root 6 then Okay, it's going to be that height, 2 root 6. So we're in a position now just to finish off and work out then the area of the trapezium because we just need to substitute h in here as 2 root 6. And the 2's cancel here. We've got 3 root 3 here. So we end up with this equaling 3 root 3 times root 6, which is broken down to root 3 times root 2. And this works out nicely. That's going to be 9 root 2. So that's the R area of a trapezium, 9 root 2. So a bit of a mission, that one, trying to uh, get four marks for that. But as I say, um, I think it really does depend on you being able to draw a sketch, though which is typical of these vector kind of questions. So I hope you've been able to follow that then. And that brings us now to the end of uh, what was quite a long question for vectors.